Leland worked hard as a state representative to help the people in his district, fought for better health care for all Texans, and brought national attention to the problems of world hunger. We need to send uh, two of our Hercules transport planes over there to help airlift food uh, to the regions that are unreachable uh, by road, and we can do a lot more, too. We have a lot more food uh, that we can send there. He was really concerned about the people all around the world. He didn't have uh, this kind of this holistic approach to life, and he liked all people. And not just African Americans. Mickey had, Mickey had such a such a wonderful, huge heart. He was the kind of guy that he could always find a positive note in whatever we were doing. And he had a very wide array of friends, from the poorest of the poor to the riches of the rich. And each group loved him just the same or just as much. He understood that wealthy people had done a lot of good and could do even more good, that he needed to reach out to them. He needed to find the ones that had hearts and that had concern and to try to work with them to make things happen for other people. Tragically, Mickey Leland died in an airplane crash in August of 1989 while visiting Africa. He was on a mission to a Sudanese refugee camp in Ethiopia. More than 300,000 Sudanese were in the camp fleeing famine and war in their country. Mickey Leland was 45 years old when he died. Mickey Leland's funeral was very much a, a national uh, event. Uh, there were a number of foreign dignitaries there, who's who of the political establishment uh, in the United States was there. Uh, it had live coverage uh, on the national news and on CNN, locally, uh, national coverage. Uh, I think he would have been very pleased uh, with the way uh, people showed an appreciation for his life uh, and the contributions he made to the body politics during his time. He was just so, just had such a big heart and just such a wonderful person. I don't know if we'll ever see anybody like Mickey again. Other prominent African Americans in the Texas legislature have included Wilhelmina Delco, Craig Washington, Eddie Bernice Johnson, Paul Ragsdale, Anthony Hall, Dr. Zan Holmes, Curtis Graves, and J.G. Sutton. Wilhelmina Delco began her public service career in the late 1960s, volunteering in the PTA at her children's school. She was elected to the board of the Austin Independent School District, the first black to be elected to public office in Austin. In the mid-1970s, Mrs. Delco ran a successful campaign for the Texas House of Representatives, where she served for 20 years. Her main interest was education, particularly to help improve the education of minorities. She served on more than 20 committees during her distinguished career in the Texas legislature. Mrs. Delco uh, felt very, very strongly that access to higher education was the key to one being successful. Her husband, Dr. Delco, Exalton Delco, actually taught Bobby Jordan. Dr. Zan Wesley Holmes, Jr. was a Methodist minister from Dallas and a professor at Southern Methodist University's Perkins School of Theology. He was elected to the Texas State House of Representatives in 1968, about the same time as Barbara Jordan. I happened to be a member of St. Luke Community United Methodist Church, and my own pastor, uh, Zan W. Holmes, was here serving in the legislature, along with Barbara Jordan. He first worked for Barbara Jordan, and uh, then he himself was elected. When we had the issues concerning hate crimes, Zan Holmes was here. I can recall him being on the floor of the state senate with me when we did the hate crimes uh, law. And I can also recall his church being vandalized and it being kind of that incident being the catalyst that ultimately broke the log jam here in the senate. When the state of Texas moved to single member districts, people of color realized an opportunity to win elections and have a voice in state government. Another African-American legislator from Dallas was Eddie Bernice Johnson, who was elected to the Texas House in 1972. 
she concentrated her time in public office working hard to improve health care for all Texans. She was a nurse by background. Uh, she had uh, worked very hard in her communities. She was known for being able to get things done. She came and served several sessions of the legislature. Much like Mickey Leland, she laid the groundwork for many young African Americans to uh, emulate as a, as a public servant. In Congress, became chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, very much a consensus builder, uh, uh, very much in many ways comparable to a Barbara Jordan in her part of the state. Curtis Graves from Houston was one of the first two black men elected to the Texas House since Reconstruction and served during the 1970s. He knew how to get attention for his issues. And uh, I think one time he jumped on top of the desk and he began to pound the desk in order to get the attention of his colleagues, and he did. From time to time, I have used that story, I haven't read about that story with uh, uh, Curt uh, uh, Representative Curtis Graves to tell people, if I'm ever denied the right to speak up for my constituents because the presiding officer of the body doesn't want to recognize me, fine. Be prepared for me to jump on that table uh, and, and lose all senatorial decorum if it's necessary. One of the most skilled orators in the Texas legislature during this period was Craig Washington from Houston, who was elected in 1972. Craig Washington was, was, was quite articulate, different style, than, certainly a different style than Mickey Leland. When I think of Craig Washington, I think about a, an advocate for the people and an advocate that uh, made certain that he put the interests of the people above all other interests. These African Americans who struggled and fought for elected office went on to accomplish great things for the people in their districts, usually against strong opposition. Their mission was to change the culture of Texas, to make it more inclusive for all its citizens. The struggle and determination of these early black legislators gave hope to all minorities about the importance and opportunity to participate in government. For the Mickey Leland's, Barbara Jordan's, um, Eddie Bernice, Curtis Gray's, they were the voices of those who for so long could not speak for themselves. Many people would like to forget the past. They would like to say, let's move on with the future. But in a real sense, everything that exists today is predicated on what happened previously. There will be persons that agree and disagree with some of the things that they did and said. But no one can disagree that they were present and accounted for. We've had people usually from top to bottom that are very talented and they bring different talents to the table. Some are great orators, uh, some are great behind the scenes people, uh, great tacticians. It doesn't matter whether you live in Fifth Ward in Houston or the Park Cities in Dallas. Our goals are the same. We all want to educate our children with quality education. We all want health care. All of us want low taxes. And so while we're here, we must do the very best we can for the, young, the next generation to follow us.